In Stephen King's novel that later became a classic movie, Shawshank Redemption, he has an interesting story going on, if you remember that book or perhaps saw the movie. In it, there's a man named Andy who has been unjustly accused and sentenced to life for the death of his wife. He is condemned to this prison, Shawshank, that is one of the worst, and so he has a, an extremely difficult, horrible experience in that prison. When he first arrives to that prison, he receives some advice from one of his fellow inmates, and his inmate tells him, hope is a dangerous thing, Andy. Hope can drive a man insane. You stay away from hope, Andy. So it is, it's 20 years before Andy is able to accomplish his dream through a lot of arduous hard work and almost unbelievable effort, he does escape from Shawshank. And if you know the story, you know that after he escapes, he makes certain that justice is served to those who were unjust to him, those who harmed him, abused him, and those who were unjust in the system. In that experience, his fellow inmates who remain behind find a sense of hope. He conquered evil. He overcame the system. He got out and escaped. And so instead of saying at the beginning that hope is a dangerous thing and stay away from there, they begin to say among themselves, hope is a good thing. And then they add, hope indeed is the best thing. We began to feel like human beings again. Hope is a good thing, the best thing. We began to feel like human beings again. That's really what's going on in this feast in the church, ascension. You see, ascension isn't about some bon voyage party, a farewell, where all of the disciples are gathered to wave goodbye to Christ. Not at all. It's about celebration of what remains, of how Christ remains among and within us. So this feast is above and most importantly, fundamentally, a feast of hope. It is a feast of hope because you and I recognize what was said in that first reading. In the Acts of the Apostles, the disciples are pictured gathered there when Christ leaves them. And as they are looking up, they have a stirring, a word, a voice in their hearts that says, why are you looking up? We might translate it, change it, or understand it. Why are you looking at nothing when your God is still among you? Why do you stand there looking up to the sky when God is among you? all around you. There is for us then a sense of real hopefulness that our God has not abandoned us but instead remains with us. For our God is still here. That is not some hope. That is our faith because our God is among us. Our God is here in the scriptures that are proclaimed, his living word. God is here in the bread blessed and broken, in the wine poured and shared. Our God is here among us in this community of faith where two or three are gathered. There am I in their midst. And our God always has promised, I will send the Spirit to live among you, to empower you, to guide you. Those promises can be believed because the other promise made by the prophets was fulfilled. A Messiah was sent. A son came. Salvation was given. And then Christ spoke, I will come among you, but I will be taken away from you, but I will rise. We can believe those promises then. No wonder we should have hope. We are not abandoned. We are not left alone. And in fact, in seeing Christ's ascension, it says, this is your future. The opening hymn of our liturgy reminded us, where our God has gone, we will follow. So we should have hope. Hope that I'm not alone. 
Hope because I have a future, a destiny, a place. I have hope because I have a purpose and a mission given to me by my God. And I have God's presence infused in all of creation and all around me. That's the first and important thing. You see, we know what those inmates learned. We learned that we cannot live without hope. Our hope gives us joy in our living and purpose in our life. That's the first lesson and perhaps the deepest of this ascension. You live with hope because you know a destiny, a purpose, and a presence. But beyond that, we also, you and I, live with a sense of being renewed human beings. Those who were the inmates said that they felt human again. They had a new sense of themselves. So do we. You see, in Christ's redemption of ourselves, he restores us to what we always were. We are God's daughter and son, created in his image, fashioned out of his likeness, and called good. And in this resurrection, in this ascension, in this promise of a life yet to come, we are told that we're going to have that same gift, our goodness renewed, and we are once more a sign of God's presence one to another. We are a beacon of hope for others. We see in one another that goodness that God has already put in us. There is evil around us, but there is much more good within us. And you and I see that. We experience that in the call of someone when we are alone, in the comfort of another when we are mourning, in the hopeful words and encouragement when we feel depressed, discouraged, or without a future. We know that goodness, and so our humanity, our inner goodness is restored. This is a feast then of hope and a feast that says, you know who you are. When others would try to rob you of your dignity, or tell you what you are not, or remind you of how you have failed, this feast says, yes, we are not perfect, but we are still God's daughter and son, still good enough for the kingdom, still promised eternal life, still given a place with God. So celebrate what we know is true. Celebrate the ascension, not of the absence of God, but of God's presence, of the hopefulness of God. In living out this day, we live knowing our inner goodness. We live, we know we are not alone. We know we will be companioned by the Spirit and empowered by the Spirit. We live as those inmates knew, with a renewed sense of hope. Hope is a good thing. It is the best thing. It gives us a sense of who we are, a renewed sense of our human nature.